Well, as I had mentioned once before, I'm going to have to strip this silver powder coat off that I'd applied a short time ago because I can't match the silver on this side cover because of that seal down inside of the clutch mechanism. And as I want the two to match, and this one needs to be repainted also, this is the NOS part. I'm going to have to strip this silver. I'm going to use a Eastwood Decoat product, which is designed for powder coating. This is really tough stuff, by the way. This powder coating, though you can blast it off with media, it's a lot of work and a lot of time. So I'm going to use Decoat and strip it off. This is a fairly benign product. So basically all I'm going to do is pour it on like that. And I will reposition the part from time to time, making sure that I cover all the painted surfaces. Usually takes, well, the warmer the temperature, the quicker it goes. It's about 65 degrees Fahrenheit in here right now. I'm going to guess it's going to take an um, hour maybe, hour and a half, something like that. We'll see. I'll bring you back later on when I've got uh, the paint removed. It's now the next morning and I've allowed the side cover to sit overnight with the Eastwood uh, Decote finish remover, paint remover applied to remove the simply silver powder coat I'd put on previously. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put on a pair of gloves. I haven't had to use gloves yet. I've used this little plastic brush to do scrubbing like this just to loosen any last finish. Now I'm going to put on a pair of gloves and I'll have to pick up the part and rotate it make sure the bottom edges were done are nice and clean. There is a recess over here on the front where the brush is and I, I want to make sure it's uh, been hit with a remover as well. I mentioned yesterday that this is a fairly benign product. What I mean by that is I don't know if there's any truly safe uh, finish stripper remover. This is a relatively safe finish remover. It has no methylene chloride. In other words, it doesn't have that real caustic, pungent chemical that's typically used in finish removers. It has a little bit of a smell to it, but nothing like methylene chloride. I certainly don't want to get it on my hands, so I will wear a, a good pair of gloves as I pick it up and rotate it. Once I've assured myself that the paint's been removed, I will remove as much of this finish remover as I can to preserve it so I can put it back in a bottle for use another day. Then I'll rinse this thoroughly with, with clean water and then dry it. I'm not sure I will have to hit it with bead blasting again. I'm going to try to avoid doing that because then i got to remask everything. If I can get away with uh, just stripping the finish, cleaning it good, and letting it dry, then I would be ready for the next step, which would be painting. After stripping the uh, simply silver powder coating off this engine cover, I decided I am going to go ahead and hit it with uh, glass beads in my media cabinet just to smooth off the surface. It's in pretty good shape here, as you can see, it should be. I've already got it masked off. This gasket service to protect the inside of the cavity, kickstart, boss. I'm not going to do the inside, obviously, so I'll, I'll approach it from the outside like this and avoid the gasket surface here, just to smooth it out and give it some consistency. If you recall, there's also a little divot right here. It doesn't show up, I don't think, very good in the camera. I think I'll go ahead and fill that since I've got to wet coat this anyway. So I'll fix that little divot. And there's a little uh, divot or flaw up here in the top somewhere I need to fix as well. So I'll go ahead and fill those, those uh, nicks. Once I've got it bead blasted, sand it back down smooth, then I'm going to apply a wet coat. In terms of wet coating, I've done some research on... Uh, the net, and it, there's really two camps that just seem to develop in terms of matching of the original Yamaha 
silver gray, which is right here, and that's these two duplicolor colors. The one in my left hand is a DE1615 aluminum. The one in the right is a DE1650 cast coat aluminum. I don't know how well that shows up in the video, but you can see a little bit of difference in color. What I'm curious about is how they will match the original NOS side cover. Now right now it appears that the one on the left, the DE1615, is probably the closer match. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to spray both of these out on coupons using my little spray booth that I brought into the shop recently and allow them to dry thoroughly to check the real color to see before I make a decision which one to use. The other thing I've been working on is researching uh, clear coats. This is one of them that was recommended. This happens to made, be made in Germany. It's really a two-pack. That is, there is a bladder in here, as I understand it, that you'll puncture. You see that pin right there with this red button on the top when you're preparing to use it. Then you shake it really good to mix it. I believe it's got a urethane component to it. This is intended as a clear coat to go over the top of whichever paint I ultimately use because this paint, from my experience, I've used this kind of paint before. It's good paint. It's not fuel resistant to modern fuels at all, which is something I insist upon. So that will be uh, for another video another time when I use this. The only concern with this product is once you puncture that bladder in there and activate the paint, it's got a 48 hour pot life, which means that you have basically 48 hours to use it up or it's done. It'll set up and you throw the can away. So I want to prepare everything, be ready to go. This can of paint, or a clear coat, it's a, it's a matte finish by the way, it's not gloss. It was around 17, 18 US dollars, I want to say. Never used it before, that'll be my first experience. Hello folks, I thought I'd give you a little view of me using the uh, spray booth for the first time. I'm not going to record everything that I do here, but rather I'll give you a sense of what this is all about. You can see here I have one of the coupons, I have two of these, for that silver Yamaha side cover spray paint that I'm doing some research on the appropriate color. This is one of the two, it's already been cleaned in acetone, it's ready to go. And I have it suspended here from a hook in the top of the cabinet. The uh, spray booth has already been set up and vented to the outside. All I have to do is turn the switch on here and we're ready to go. It's now exhausting to the outside. The booth light is on up above here. Again, it's not quite as bright as I would like it to be. Probably will replace that someday with a LED unit. But for now, this is what I've got. So I'll reposition the camera. I have to put on my uh, face mask, my, my small respirator. I will still use this even though this is vented to the outside. I'm a real believer, in, especially when it comes to fumes, paint fumes. And even though this is not a urethane-based paint, I am, it is solvent based, so I'm going to take the precaution wearing this uh, uh, face mask. So I'm going to go ahead and get that set up. I'll reposition the camera and I'll, I'll try to give you a shot over my shoulder as I'm spraying this first coupon. Okay, I've got the paint mixed up. The first one I'm going to shoot is a DE1615. Turn on my exhaust fan and start spraying this, uh, this coupon down. I just sprayed the first light coat. I'll let that flash off for, oh, probably 10 minutes or so, and then I'll come back and I'll hit it again. I'll do at least two, maybe three coats. What I'm looking for here isn't a fine finish. What I'm trying to represent is fairly is the color because that's what I'm trying to compare here against the original NOS side cover. So I'll let this flash for a few more minutes and then I'll come back and do it again. 
This has flashed off for about 10 minutes or so. Now I'm going to go ahead and spray the second coat. After this is flashed for about 10 minutes or so, I'll take a look at it. If it needs a third coat, I'll do so. Otherwise, I'll call it on this one and move on to the second coupon. I'm going to go ahead and give this a third light coat just for consistency of color and finish. When I'm done with this one, I'll bring in the other uh, coupon with the other paint and do the same thing. I won't show that because that'll just be a repetition of what you've just seen. It's been several hours since I spray painted these coupons and though they're not completely uh, hard the finish they are dry to the touch and I believe the color is as true as it's going to get I think additional time for for hardening is going to affect the color a great deal my left hand is a duplicolor 1615 and in my right hand is a duplicolor DE 1650 in terms of matching the, the cap, which is just a relative guide, you can see the, this is the can of 1615. And uh, you can see that right there. I think that matches relatively well, actually. The 1650, in my opinion, doesn't match the cap quite as, as well. Of course, I don't expect it to be perfect because this is plastic, so the substrate is different. This is the DE1650 paint, and you can see this has a little bit different color to it in my mind. In case there's any doubt, I was very careful about making sure I sprayed the paints correctly. In other words, these are not the same paint, even though they might almost look that way. I was very deliberate about keeping them separate. They're very close, though, I have to admit. So the real question is, which one matches the the uh, NOS part, this is that NOS left side cover I purchased on eBay a few weeks back in terms of color. I have a window right here, my shop window that's open for natural daylight. The lights up above are LEDs, those are just replaced recently with daylight colored bulbs as well. So there you can see the 1615 and here is the 1650. I originally was thinking the 1650 was going to be the closer match based on the the can cap. But right now, to my eye, I think the 1615 is a better match. I don't know if that's really coming through for you in the video or not. I'm trying to get different perspectives of light. That's the 1615. This is the 1650. Frankly, I'm not sure it makes a whole lot of difference. I think both of them are reasonably close to this original part. I think you can go either way and they're, um, they'll be fine. I don't think most people would, would, uh, would be able to really detect the difference between this and this. I'm not sure yet which I'm going to go with. I'm probably going to take it into the house and ask my wife for her opinion. She's pretty good with stuff like this and see what she has to say. But again, reality, I'm not sure it's going to make a lot of difference. They're both very close. I'm still personally leaning a bit to the 1615 right here. I don't know. We'll see. If you got any comments on this, feel free to drop them below. By the time you see this video, because I shoot videos several weeks in advance of me posting them, I will probably have already made my decision, but I will be curious what people might think. Again, 1615 
1650. Have to see what we're going to end up with. Eventually you'll see what I decided in a future video. I want to give you a view of the repainted right engine side cover here on the right. I ultimately decided to go with the Duplicolor DE1650 cast coat aluminum. I showed my wife the two coupons along with this NOS side cover. This is the, again the opposite side of the engine. This is a left cover, engine cover. And she thought that the 1650 was a little bit better match than the 1615. And I guess I agreed with her. So I went ahead this morning and painted the cover. Now this is dry to the touch, but it's not cured, so I'm going to let this set for the next week or so before I go ahead and clear coat it. Just as a way of reminder, I'm going to use this uh, Max Clear Matte finish because these never really had a gloss to them. That's to protect it from fuel. That's the only reason I'm going to use a clear coat. The other reason I want to show this to you today is I'm going to go ahead now and have to strip this cover and I wanted to have a reference for you so you could see this is not a perfect match. It's, it's closer than the Simply Silver powder coat I did previously. But it's not a perfect match, but it's pretty close, I would say. It's pretty close. So I'm now going to go ahead and strip this and eventually here then I'll paint it to match this cover with the same paint so that I can clear coat them both at the same time, which will be uh, probably a couple of weeks out by the time I get this stripped and painted, cured, before I can clear coat it. So that was my decision. I'd be curious again what your thoughts were, but I'm committed now, so I'm going to just continue on. Here's a quick shot of the left engine side cover all prepared for painting. Got all the original paint blasted off with glass beads. You can see I've got some of the openings plugged here with silicone plugs. Silicone's not necessary for the wet coat, but they're easy to use. You'll also notice I did drill and tap this hole right here for the grease fitting that was on the original part. This is really a blind hole. I did not drill all the way through. I drew, just drilled deep enough to be able to install the grease fitting to have the uh, appearance of the original piece. If you recall, this part did not have this drilling, <clears throat> excuse me, did not have this drilling done. So obviously there had been an engineering change. Next step now will be uh, to clean the part up one more time thoroughly with uh, probably use acetone or brake cleaner, one or the other, and let it dry thoroughly, and then I'll, I'll lay down uh, two or three coats of the dupe color paint that I used on the other cover as well. I will not use a primer, by the way. Uh, typically for something like this, the OEMs didn't use primer, and I don't use a primer. I, I feel it just builds the finish uh, unnecessarily, and it's not necessary for a restoration that's not going to be used um, outside. This will be a show bike, not a ridden bike. Uh, you'll also notice I made this little holding fixture for now, and that's just designed to elevate again the part up off the flat surface so that I can go around the perimeter and spray. That's just a temporary little fixture I cobbled together to um, a few pieces of extra wood and plywood and that kind of thing. So next step will be to clean it and paint it.